good to have you in God's house. There we go. You feel really good welcome. If you want to be back every Sunday, every Wednesday night, every Sunday night, praise God. Turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 12, start verse 15 and 16. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 15 and 16. Don't forget to baptize the next week. Please make plans to be there. I have several that wants to be baptized, and I pray that we have good weather and have them baptized. And we'll be down at the river. So please make plans to be with us at 2 o'clock next Sunday. I've done it in swimming pools before, but it just ain't like doing it in the river. Praise God, doing it in the river makes a difference. Makes you bring back to what God really wants in our life. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 15 and 16. I, uh, the Lord gave me this message at the first of the week, but the Lord knows it. I know it's going to go along with the Sunday school lesson, so praise God it will. But I really believe that. God is wanting to bless his people. He loves his people and he wants to bless them. Amen. He wants to give them knowledge of what blessings are for and why we get blessings. Sometimes uh, we look out and we wonder why our world is turned upside down. We wonder why our life is such a mess. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about our lives, our world as far as we know it. Uh, we wonder why it's turned upside down. We wonder why things are happening to us. Uh, we try to decide, uh, have we done things wrong, or is there things that have went wrong in our lives for the reason these things are happening? Sometimes it's hard to decipher why things are happening in our lives. And sometimes we take it out on God, sometimes we take it out on other people, uh, sometimes we take it out on things that we love, uh, sometimes we wonder why the things are going on just in our life, and other people are being blessed and they're not serving God and we wonder why God's doing that to us and we get mad at God over it sometimes. And we can't see really why the things are happening to us. But I had a guy talking to me the other day and he was telling me about a fellow that uh, he uh, really, I don't think he likes God very much at all. And he sort of self-centered about what he can do and how he can do. And then he really thinks about how great he is, but sometimes whenever we think we're great, we're in for a great fall. And this person was telling me, he said, sometimes I just feel like telling them that there is a God. He said, sometimes I do. And I said, you know, I said, if he don't give his heart to God, you need to give him a blessed hope of what he's enjoying. He said, why? He said, why would I do that? I said, because he's going to spend eternity in hell. I said, eternity in hell is going to be the worst place he's ever been in his, uh, he, ever been. I mean, you know, and, and there's no way out. And there's no way of getting out of the situation that he's got himself into. And if you deny him of the joy that he's having right now, he'll never have no joy in his life. I want you to think about that a little bit because... The people that are on their way to hell, the only joy they're going to get is what little enjoyment they're having right now. And then after that, it's eternity of punishment, That's damnation. Right. There's no joy. There's no happiness. There's no, it'll be a struggle the rest of their eternity. And you know, we think sometimes the little struggles that we go through, the little problems that we have in our lives, we think, well... You know, I don't understand why God lets this happen to me. I don't understand why these things are going on in my life. I don't understand why God don't put this off on somebody else. And, but the little struggles that you go through sometimes make you stronger, make you greater with God because you realize that God's brought you through that struggle. Now, I've got some instances here I'm going to talk to you about this morning. But here in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse starting verse 15, this was whenever Samuel was trying to get the people to understand that the reason God couldn't bless them and God couldn't really give them the things that they wanted is because they really weren't putting God first in their life. In their life. And sometimes we don't put God first in our life. 
And God is a jealous God. The commandments say that, does it not? That he's not going to allow us to put other gods before him and, and, and we're not going to be able to worship other things but him. I mean, you know, uh, praise God. You might have a new vehicle sitting out there this morning, but you can't worship it. You might have a new home that you just come out of this morning, but you can't worship it. Because those things are going to pass away. You're not going to live in them forever. They're just material things that we have now. They're just simple things that you have right now. You're just here to enjoy them. You might, I've heard people say, well, I don't owe no payments. I got everything paid for. Well, <laughs> to a certain extent, you're no better off than the man that owes on everything he's got. Because yours are going to pass away just like his is. We're not going to have it, but just for a short period of time. God has allowed us to enjoy it. God has allowed us to have part of it. I've heard people say, well, they've rented all their life and they've accomplished nothing. Well, guess what? You paid on your house and you got it paid off, but what have you accomplished? You're going to leave it one of these days. That's right. See, whenever we put ourselves better than somebody else, we find that we're no better off than anyone else. That's right. Amen. To a certain extent, unless we know God. And I want to get down to that point. That we do, if we know God, then things are different. The people, Samuel was here talking to the people about whenever they were, uh, God was trying to bring them out and trying to deliver them. That, they wouldn't listen. Uh, they uh, got heady and high-minded and wanted to do things on their own. How many of you remember that whenever God was bringing them out, that they would stop and they would murmur and complain? And I believe that we do some of the same things. Whenever God's trying to deliver us and try to give us and get us into the direction that we need to go, that we murmur and complain, fuss, argue with God. We might not do it directly with Him, but we do it with the things that we say. The things that we have come out of our mouth. And God hears those things. Let me tell you something. We need to love everything that God's created. That's right. You say, now wait a minute. God's created some things that I don't know whether I want to love or not. We need to love everything that God's created. Amen. Every person that God's created, we must love. I'm not going to run my wife down if she ain't no good to me. Because God created her. And she's mine. And we're not supposed to run one another down. We're supposed to lift one another up. You see, that's exactly what the people were doing here. They were running the, the God down. They were saying he was no good. Uh, that the things he was doing was no good. But we need to lift up God. And what was happening was they didn't really stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Listen to this, verse 15. But if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you, as it was against your fathers. Talking to the people here now. Now therefore, stand and see the great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Stand and see. And I think we've got to the point to where we don't want to stand and see. I think we've got to the point to where we want it and we want it now. We are instant in everything that we do. We're instant pudding. We're instant in our mashed potatoes. We're instant in everything that we do. Microwave, fast, get it done. Whether it tastes as good or not, get it done. That's where we are. And we're the same way with God. We're coming to church. And we've got an hour, and praise God, we want instant shouting, praising God, and loving God, great singing, all in one hour, and then I want to go home. Turn me loose. Come on. Come on. That's where we are today. We're not really worshiping and loving God and putting God first in our life. We're not really saying, God, I have time for you. God, I want to create in me a new being, God, that I'll uplift your name and show forth your love. And that's where the people were. They were complaining because they had problems in their lives. And how many of you in here don't have a problem in your life going on right now? Every one of us do. Every one of us. Yours might be small right now, but you've got a problem. And just hang on, honey. The devil's getting ready to put a bigger problem in your way. It's coming. Don't get excited, but it's coming. The devil always tries to pull every one of us down to the 
bottom. He tries to take your victory. He tries to destroy what you have with God. He tries to pull you down just as low as he can pull you. That's his job. And whenever you give him ear, that's what the people were doing. They were giving the devil ear, and they were listening to it. That's right. And as they were giving that ear to the devil, he was destroying their love for God. And sometimes we do the same thing, I'm afraid. Uh -huh. We give the old devil ear and we listen to what he has to say. And whenever he says, hey, you know, you're never going to be any better or, or you're never going to be able to accomplish this or you're never going to be able to do that. I mean, the older you get, you realize that some of the things that you wanted to accomplish in your life are never going to be accomplished. Uh -huh. I mean, you realize that, you know, your days are numbered. I don't care. I mean, you know, uh, uh, if you're 60 years old in here this morning, most of us are on the downside. We're not on the upside. You understand what I'm trying to say? In other words, from 20 to 60, you can accomplish just about anything you want to do. You can go out here, you can work, you can set a goal, and you can do it. But whenever you get in your 60s, then it's downward movement. And the devil wants you to think that. The devil wants you to get to that portion of work. Whenever you get to a certain age that you can't do anymore, you can't work anymore, you can't preach anymore, you can't teach anymore, you can't pray anymore. I've seen people take their jobs and whenever they get 62, praise God, they quit church, they quit teaching in church, they go home and they say, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to retire. I'm not going to do anything. Well, praise God, I have not found a stopping point in God's plan. Amen. And I believe people find stopping points in God's plan. And that's the reason God is a, a God that is jealous and he wants us to worship him at all times. He wants us to serve him at all times. I was thinking about, uh, I don't know exactly what age Elijah was whenever he was in the wilderness. And, and you know he was out in the wilderness because he didn't have food uh, to eat and uh, there was a famine in the land. I don't woke that boy up. And there was a famine in the land. There was trouble because there was a famine and God sent him out into the wilderness to get his water from a brook. Sent him out into the wilderness so the ravens could come and feed him off the old king's table. And he was being fed and everything was going good for him. And then all of a sudden the brook dried up. The food quit coming. So he had to come out of the wilderness. Whenever he came out of the wilderness, the first house he came to probably was a widow woman's house. She's out there gathering up a few sticks, going out in the yard, getting a few sticks to put into the oven so she can bake a few little cakes, and then her and her son's going to die. I've always praised this woman, but in my mind now I wonder, has she given ear to the devil? Was she listening to the devil? Because she was out there walking around in that yard picking up those few sticks, getting ready to go in the house and bake those few cakes, and then she was going to die. Because there was a famine in the land. Everything looked bad. It looked like everything had dried up. It looked like everything was going wrong. It looked like nothing could happen on her behalf. Do we not get the same way sometimes whenever it's around our house and things look like they're drying up? It looks like nothing's going our way. It looks like everything's going wrong. The bill collectors are calling. We can't pay the bills. Whenever everything's taking place in our house and we say, what's going to turn next? How are we going to do all these things? And then we start worrying and we start uh, getting down in ourselves. We can't worship God whenever we come to church. Those bills are on our mind. The sickness is on our mind. If we're sick, if there's a problem in our house, there's a, there's things that's going on. Maybe the, the the plumbing's messed up or maybe the septic tank's overflowing and whenever you come to church all those things are on your mind all the things that are taking place at your house and you're wondering how in the world am I going to do all these things how in the world is these things going to happen for me I can't understand it I don't know what's going to happen but you see I think that's what the state of mind this widow woman was in she was out there and she was saying I'm going to get these few sticks I'm going to bake these cakes and then we're just going to die because I don't reckon God's going to take care of us I don't reckon God's going to bless us and then the man of God come walking up out of the wilderness and says, bake me a cake first. Amen. My Lord, how selfish can you get? How selfish can you get? She done told him all she had in the house was a little flyer. Her and her son was going to bake a 
couple of cakes and they was going to eat those two little cakes of bread and then they were going to die. And he says, go in there and make me one first. What's the devil going to tell you whenever he, somebody tells you something like that? <laughs> but you see, I believe somewhere in her mind she went back before God whenever she had obeyed God. Sometime or another, she had already had distress in her life. Some words or another, things had already happened in her life, and she didn't know how to handle them. She didn't know which way to turn. She didn't know what to do. And then God showed up on the scene. So what did she do? She went in the house. She baked the man of God and cake first. Then she went back into the house and went into the the flour meal and a bin and she raked down and pulled up enough to bake her and her son the cakes they needed. Went back every day until the famine was over and God supplied the meal in the barrel. God put the oil in that vessel so she could pour it out into that pan and bake that flour. See, that's the God we're serving. Amen. That's the God that loves us. Amen. And I think we're sort of like this. I think we're sort of like the woman walking around out in the yard. We're saying, God, have you forsaken me? God, have you forgotten me? God, you know that I need your help. God, you know where I'm at. You know what's going on in my life. We're instant. God, come to my rescue instantly. Now, because I need you. But God's not instant. He comes on his time. Not our time. But God's always on time. Amen. Even if he's four days late, just like he was with Lazarus. That's right. Even if he's four days late, he's always on time. Also, whenever Elisha picked up the mantle and went back to the Red Sea and he hit that Red Sea, praise God, it parted. He walked across on dry ground, just like Elijah did. And then, praise God, a woman called out to him and said the editors were coming in and they were going to take his young, her young men at the house her sons. She's crying out and she's looking for help. Nothing wrong with looking for help. Nothing wrong with that, having a brother, sister, pastor, a Sunday school teacher, uh, anybody to pray for you. Nothing wrong with that. But whenever you give up on God, that's whenever you're missing out on the blessings. Right. That's whenever you're really falling into the trap of the devil. And that's what happens most of the time. Whenever things are going wrong, people fall into a trap. But what did the man of God tell her to do? He said, what you got in the house? I ain't got nothing in the house but a little oil. Got a little pot of oil in the house. He said, go out and borrow vessels. And he went out and borrowed clay vessels. And praise God, whenever they brought him into the house, she started pouring into those vessels. And whatever she did, it filled up every vessel that those young men had borrowed. She paid off the bonds uh, that were on those young men. They became her children. And she was able to sell the rest of the oil and live. Amen. Because God's anointing was upon him. You say, Brother Ken, all that's Old Testament stuff. All that's about people years ago. All that's about things that happened. And, and praise God, uh, uh, give me a New Testament experience. I want to tell you about two men that were preaching the gospel. They were full of God. They had the anointing of God upon them. The blessings of God. They had God's blessings that was... Uh, incinerating their spirit, their mind, their soul. And then what happens? The devil opens up the door and lets the Roman soldiers come in and take them. And they go have to go to the inner prison and be locked in stocks and bonds, uh, chains, stocks and chains. Be bound down in the middle of the inner prison. And you know... I think sometimes the devil does the same thing to us. Whenever there's a problem in our life, he tries to get us to the inner prison. He tries to get us bound down to where we'll just lay down and quit. Now, let me tell you something, honey. You can lay down and quit on God. And that's exactly what the people, whenever they were heading to the Red Sea, they were laying down and quitting on God. And they never got into the promised land because of it. I'm going to tell you something. There's a time to stand up for God. And today is the day to stand up for God. You say, Brother Ken, that's Old Testament stuff. Leave that stuff alone. Praise God. God said, I come to fulfill. Right. 
the word of God. So Amen. it's New Testament today because God has fulfilled it in our, and he's going to fulfill it in our lives today. And we're going to be blessed people because if you listen to this, I believe it will make you stronger in the Lord. If you'll do what I'm asking you to do this morning, I believe it will make you stronger in the Lord. Because Paul and Silas was out doing the gospel. They were out preaching the gospel. And you know they give that little old damsel uh, time of day. And, uh, and she started following them, the one they had cast the demons out of. And then she started following them and started praising them for being the most high God. Oh, these are the two men of the most high God. Oh, how they worship God. Oh, and then she was... Paul just got upset with her and turned around and cast that old demon out of her and praised God. She became a living saint of God. Amen. And then whenever she went back to the people that were making money off the soothsaying where she was reading palms and all this stuff, praise God, she wasn't no good to them because, praise God, she'd met a living God. A living God, a change. An old dead God that people try to press off on you won't change you. But a living God will change you. The fire of God will change your life. It'll give you a new road. It'll make you happy. It'll make some joy in your heart. And whenever she did that, old Paul and them, they got in trouble. So the Roman soldiers came out and found them and they cast them into prison. Before they cast them into prison, though, they decided they'd just beat them real good. Strike them real good. And I feel sure they striped them good before they put them in there. Because in the, in the Romans' ways, they could beat them to the dead. They didn't matter. And I feel sure they beat them good. Now, this is what God wants us to do. Even in the eyes, whenever everything looks like around us has gone wrong, whenever it looks like it's all our fault, it looked like it was Paul and Silas' fault they were in prison. I mean, somebody takes you to prison, who are you going to blame? I mean, you know, I, I, they locked up people today and had to let them out years later because DNA has proved they weren't guilty. But the, the crooked lawyers and all these people out here and these crooked people in the government, they have put them into jail and, and caused them to go through time and their lives are ruined because of things that's happened to them. And they might have been a child of God. I don't know. But for some reason or another... They've had to go through things. And Paul and Silas had to go through something here. They had to be locked in the inner prison, down in the dungeon, away from everybody else because they wanted to put guards around them. They wanted to make sure these men didn't get out because they had cast out this devil. They had caused all this harm to the people around them. And now they're going to try and protect them from getting away. And all Paul and Silas has to do now is to worship God. Wait a minute. When everything's going wrong in my house, the septic tank's backing up in the showers, the refrigerator quits, the car won't crank, my wife or my husband's sick, the children's sick. I'm just giving you some instances of what can be going on. Or the doctor says, hey, with what's going on with you, you can't live. You can't live at all. These things are going to kill you. You miss two house payments and praise God they're getting ready to foreclose on your house. What's the first thing we do? We sit down and have a pity party. We start complaining. We start telling everybody, you know what's happening to me. You know what's going on in my house. You just don't know. You don't know what's going on. You don't know how bad it is. You don't know where I'm at. And if we do like Paul and Silas, if we go back, go back to the old gospel, go back to the old red burgundy hymn books, pull out some of them old songs, that's got some gospel in them. Pull out some of them old songs that's got some blood in them. Pull out some of them old songs that's got Jesus Christ, the Son of God in them. And start singing praises unto Him. And start worshiping Him. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something. we got a God that will come to our rescue. He'll deliver us. He'll give us what we need. Take that pity party. Cast it out. Give it to God. And let God be God. It's time that we stand up to this God. And let Him be Lord of our lives. It's time that we let God use us. Just like he did Paul and Silas. Right. He took a great earthquake. Caused the stops and the chains to fall from them. 
and praise God caused one of the guards to get saved. Amen. Amen. Now listen. Sometimes after God does something for us, we're still scared. We're still scared what the devil can do to us. So they told Paul and Silas, because they were Roman men, they told them, they said, now listen, you go back and tell them two men, they can go out the back way. And nobody's going to bother. I like Paul. I like to read what Paul said. Amen. And what Paul did. He said, look, we're Romans. We came in the front door. Hallelujah, I feel a witness on this. And we're going back out that front door. Amen. You ain't sending us out no other way. You see, what he's doing is giving the devil a black eye. You might want to hide me. You might want to shame me. But praise God, I am a child of the living God. I'm a child of the one that hung on the old rugged cross. I'm a child of the one that has delivered from that day forward. And praise God, he's going to deliver me out of your hands. And he's going to deliver me out the front door just like you brought me in. Because I'm serving this God. And he's down because I love him. I want to tell you something. If we'll put God first in our life and we'll let him be Lord of our lives, there's not enough devils in hell that can cause us to get down and have a pity party, but whenever the devil's trying to get us down, we'll fall on our knees and cry out to this God and say, God, deliver your child, and God will come to your rescue if you let him do it. Amen. Not mine. How many of you is going to do that? How many of you is really going to do that? The next time something happens in your life, how many of you are going to do that? How many of you are you really going to do that? Would you think about that a few minutes? You go to the doctor in the morning. Maybe you have to go before morning. And the doctor looks at you and says, What you got to come here? You need to die. Are you going to start having a pity party? They said, We got mad at me. Last time Debbie took me up to the doctor after we left church that morning. And Heart was had been hurting me so bad and all. We went up there and the doctor come in there and the next Monday morning he said, I don't think you're taking us seriously. I said, What's happening to you? You could die with. And I said, I took you seriously, but I know the Lord. Why worry? Right. I've took you seriously, but I know the Lord. And he's gonna deliver me. That's right. Amen. I'm there with a smile on my face, and I'm supposed to be there with my head hung down because he gave me bad news. This is going to kill you. This is going to, you can't live with this. Well, praise God, I hate to leave my wife to take care of everything by herself, but praise God, I'm going to tell you something, God will give her strength to take care of it. If he wants me to go and he don't want me to preach no more, then praise God, don't hold me back because I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. And ain't no doctor going to get me down to where I don't want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven no matter what happens and no matter what goes on. And praise God, I hope you feel the same way. The next time you go back to the doctor and the doctor tells you something like this, you tell him, don't give you no good report. If he tells me I'm going to heaven, I'm getting a good report. I'm getting a good report. But let me tell you something. This is where I get my good report from. God is not going to let you die I already knew that. My heart was hurting so bad I felt like it was going to die then. But God ain't going to let you die until he gets done. And I said, God, whenever I preach the last message, then God, you'll be done with me. And I knew I hadn't preached my last message yet. So I didn't have to worry because I knew God was going to give me strength. 
You say, Brother Ken, does your heart hurt you? No, it doesn't hurt me. I praise God. Whenever it does, you know what I do? I start working hard. I tell the devil, I say, devil, you might make it hurt, but I got a God that loves me. I got a God that I love, and praise God, he's going to deliver me, and I'm not going to lay down, and I'm not going to have no pity party over this thing. I just ain't going to tell my wife, because if I do, she'll make me go to the hospital, and praise God, I'm going to get better in the name of Jesus. Praise yeah. the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I sure ain't bragging on self. I'm bragging on the God that I'm serving. Amen. Because I could have told you that this morning if I wasn't serving. Amen. He is a God and he is a deliverer. Yep. Paul said I have a thorn in the flesh. Sometimes we have things that hurt us and we have to abide by those things. This whole body was made to lay down and quit one of these days. It wasn't made to live forever. Somebody died the other day at 114. The oldest living person in the world, they said, 114. Well, praise God. That's a long time. They've outlived all their friends, all their, probably most of their kids. <laughs> you know, having God in your life, though, is not a lonely life. No matter what age you lay down, if you know Jesus, it's goodbye here and hello there. But I'm going to tell you something. Christians, I'm talking to the Christians. I'm talking about those that have something with God. Those that know that their name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. You listen to me this morning. You quit having a pity party. If a pity party starts at your house, if it starts in your wife or it starts in your husband, it starts in your children, you rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus. You say, Brother Ken, we ain't going to have no depressed times in our lives. Sure we are. There's going to be some time because that's whenever you grow in God. But if you're the one that doesn't get depressed during that time, you're the one that's going to reach down and pick the other one up. And you're going to give them strength. And they're going to grow in the Lord. And that's what we need to do. We need to reach out and help one another. Help them to grow in the Lord. Praise God, whenever one's down, the other one's up. Strength. I found that out in my life. Whenever I'm fussing about something and uh, arguing about something and just upset with what's going on, most of the time my wife will look over at me and say, that ain't what you preach. Right? <laughs> so you know what I do? I shut that man. And then I start praying about it. You need somebody to do that to you. Amen. You need somebody. Come on. Right. That's what God gives you people for. To help you work together. Become one. Become that love of God. Every one of us needs that. Now wait a minute. Some of you ain't got no husband. Some of you ain't got no wife. But you've got a friend in Jesus. What if that friend looks over at you and says, hmm, that ain't what you've been saying. You gonna get mad at that friend or you gonna say, hmm, because the friend's right. The friend's right. We're serving God that is greater than anything this world is. He owns the cattle on all the hills. Right. And praise God, he owns the hills. Amen. It's amazing to me to go. I love to go to the mountains. I love to go to the beach and watch the water roll in and out. I just wonder how God can make it do that. But I love going to the mountains and watch how God has took his hand and created those streams and the water just falls and just keeps falling. Comes out of the ground in places there. Fresh and clean. Pure. And people talk about everything in the world is nasty. Everything. You can go over and just get you a handful of that water out of that stream and just put it right in your mouth and drink it because it's pure. Because it comes from the wrong people. Because God has blessed us. Amen. We're serving a God that loves us with things like that. Why should we let him down? Whenever we're having the little problems in our lives, get on your knees and pray over them and put God first. He'll deliver you. You're here this morning. Maybe you've been having a pity party in your house. You say, well, Ken, I ain't going to that altar because everybody knows I've been having it. The Word of God says if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. Right, amen. Don't let God be ashamed of you. 
come down to this altar and get it under the blood. Get it under the blood, no matter what it is. God loves you. If you're not a Christian this morning, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what it is to lay down at night and find peace in your heart, your mind, your soul. You don't know what it is to have that coming in spirit with God and let Him brush up against you and love you sometimes and just let you know that He's with you. Oh, blessed Holy Ghost, have your way here this morning. There be one that would step out this morning and say, I need this Master. I need this Lord. Or I need to get closer to Him. That I won't be murmuring and complaining, but I'll be uplifting His joy and His love in my life. Is there one here this morning? Is there one? Not going to tarry long, but you know who you are. You need to come. Come. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you this morning, Lord, and I thank you for the blessings. God, I know there's things that go on in our lives, God, sometimes that we don't understand. But you're still the Lord and the Master and the Savior of them all. God, I ask that you just move in our lives, God. Lift us up. Lord, help us to be that vessel, God, that can be used of you. God, I just honor you and praise you for what you've done for us, God. I ask, God, that you bless us and move upon us, God. Bless these that come to the altar, God. Lift them up, God. Some apart in this last day. Help them to be that vessel, God, that can be used of you. God, I just honor you and praise you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Rebuke the devil and all of his power. Stand on the word of God. Believe in the knowing Lord. That you're king of kings and Lord of Lord. You can do it for the ones in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Praise God, you can do it for us today. In Jesus' name, Lord. Precious Lord, be the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless her, Lord. Use her, God, for your Take my hand. Thank you, Lord. say the words in the word of God like they maybe they're supposed to be. I know sometimes that I can't maybe talk as plural and as wonderful as other people, but I have learned to obey God. Amen. Amen. And if I obey God, whenever I leave this place, I find peace between me and Him. Amen. And I hope you find the same thing between you and Him Come as you on. go through those doors in the name of Jesus. Shake hands and be friendly. It's good to have each and every one. Hey.